What's going on, everybody? John Presnowski here, back with the Bear Necessities Podcast. I'm here with my five big observations and takeaways from the Bears' win over the Las Vegas Raiders, 30-12. Let's get right to it. Number one, the Bears may have found something in Tyson Bajan. This kid might be a gem. Is he the Bears' Brock Purdy, though? That remains the question. Let's pump the brakes on that. Let, let's get right to it. I mean, Tyson Bajan was impressive in his debut he seamlessly executed that Bears game plan dinking and diving and dunking all across the field on multiple drives and the biggest thing that I took away from Tyson's performance he didn't turn the ball over he didn't look like a rookie out there I mean he didn't take silly sacks he didn't force balls he didn't he didn't throw any interceptions he was smart he was calculated and he was decisive and he leaned on that Bears rushing attack that's exactly what the Bears wanted to see from the undrafted rookie free agent, the 23-year-old out of the University of Shepard, Division II. I mean, what an underdog. What, a, what a, a phenomenal story that we've been following all throughout training camp into this season. Bears might have something in this kid. I mean, we, we might have our QB2 of the future, the perfect backup quarterback. But before we get into whether or not he should be the Bears quarterback of the future, is he better than Justin Fields? I'm going to pump the brakes just, just a second. I'm a big Tyson Bajan guy. You, you guys have heard me talk about Tyson Bajan's footwork, his mechanics, his skill set the past couple of weeks. I don't think Tyson's got the strongest arm. Let's be real. Justin Fields is bigger. He's stronger. He's faster. He has all the God-given tools necessary to be a good starting quarterback in this league. We just haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen enough of a sample size quite yet. The Bears didn't need Tyson Bajan to be an all-star this past Sunday. They, they didn't need him, you know, to be Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. He, he, we didn't need to see that out of him. He didn't take sacks. He didn't, force, he didn't force any balls that weren't there. He proved that he can play in this league and he can play at a high level. Extremely, extremely impressive. And assuming that Tyson Bajan does play this upcoming Sunday night, in L.A., primetime against the Chargers, what do we wish to see out of Tyson? Do we want to see him take more shots down the field? Do you want him to continue to play it safe? Lean on that Bears rushing attack? I mean, this team now, ladies and gentlemen, the Bears are fourth in the NFL in overall rushing. They were number one last year. So picking right up where they left off, can Tyson win back-to-back -back games if Justin continues to be doubtful with that thumb injury? Interesting enough, the Bears are 2-1 and one now since sending Chase Claypool to the Miami Dolphins. And this Chargers team, this Chargers team has a tough time putting opponents away. I mean, every game is one score contest with, this, with these Chargers, despite the loss this past Sunday to the Kansas City Chiefs. But the Bears open at 8.5 point underdogs on the road against this Chargers squad. Should be an interesting game. But again, the Bears might have found something in Tyson Bajan. Will we see this kid elevate his play and even play better than he did on Sunday? Are we asking too much of him? I want to let you I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear your thoughts and and hear whether or not what you think Tyson Bajan is the guy the Bears should lean on going forward. Let me know in the comment section. Deonta Foreman was a healthy scratch for multiple weeks early on this season. Why? Why? Uh, this guy has continued to show and prove his worth in this Bears offense. He rushed for 16 rushing attempts, 89 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. He also caught three passes for a touchdown as well. So three tutties the other day. I mean, he is an effective option out of the backfield. He is that big Thunder Bell cow, and he runs hard. I mean, the, there's a reason why the Bears and Ryan Poles went out to sign him as a free agent this offseason, paying him, what, two, three million dollars this offseason. And we know, we know Roshan Johnson, rookie running back out of Texas, is coming back out of concussion protocol very shortly here. We know Khalil Herbert is also going to come off IR very shortly as well. So what's going to happen with Deontay Foreman? I would really, really like to see him continue to be the number two back behind Herbert once he gets back fully healthy. He needs to be an available option every week. He, he cannot be a healthy scratch moving forward. This is the second consecutive week. He has proved his worth, and we all have seen why. And no matter what happens going forward, he has rightfully earned his spot in this running back rotation for the Bears.
No Khalil Herbert, no Roshan Johnson, no problem so far. Deontay Foreman's carrying the mail, and Foreman upended with a first down as he gets to the 40-yard line. Has this defense officially turned the corner? I believe they have. It took a couple games, but the Bears' defense in back-to-back -back performances showed up strong. And listen, albeit against low, below-average offenses, I mean, they held Devontae Adams to 57 yards the other day. That was pretty impressive. And, you know, a little bit might have been Brian Hoyer not getting the ball downfield to arguably one of the best wideouts in the league. But statistically and historically, Devontae Adams has owned this franchise. So props to the Bears, props to that defense, props to that Bears secondary. We're going to get to Jalen Johnson in just a second. But, you know, bottom line, guys, whoever the Bears' opponents are, you need to win at home. And it was a sight to see that this defense showed up again on Sunday and performed at a high level. It felt so good to enjoy a victory Monday. It's been over a full calendar year since the Bears won a game at home. Uh, it, 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 was, it was great. Walking through the grocery store yesterday with a smile on my face and my Bears cap on. Need more of that. Need, need more victory Mondays, hopefully, in the upcoming weeks and throughout the, throughout the rest of the season. And... You know, despite what we might think about Matt Eberflus as the head coach of this team, since taking over the defense, since taking over the play calling uh, duties of the defense in week four, this team has shown better improvement in tackling. They have gone after the ball in turnovers. Yes, I still think that they need to get more pressure on the quarterback, but that's more of a, a, a roster uh, decision. That's up to Ryan Poles to provide Iberflus with that talent. We need more than just Unique Ngakwe on the edge. But this team is blitzing at an alarming rate, way more than when Allen Williams was the defensive coordinator. So big props to Matt Iberflus getting that defense ready to play, continuing to stack up good performances week to week. I, I really hope that we continue to see this Bears defense improve, and I, I, I really want them to show up and show out this upcoming Sunday night against the L.A. Chargers, who are turnover prone. Justin Herbert, yes, he's a great quarterback, but this that offense, although it's good, they turn the ball over. So can the Bears get after it? Can they win the turnover game again on Sunday? Does Jalen Johnson deserve an extension? Let's stick with the defense here for a second. What a game by number 33. He came into week seven as a prime trade candidate for the Bears leading into the deadline. And his trade value just took a massive jump after he picked off two passes, taking one back to the house. Again, what a performance by number 33. Johnson plays a premium position in this league at corner. And despite, you know, only on his resume, surprisingly, that's only three interceptions total in his Bears tenure. This is his fourth season in the league. But Johnson is still, in my opinion, one of the better shutdown corners in the NFC North uh, at the minimum. So whether Johnson's future is in Chicago with the Bears or elsewhere, it, it, it was great to see his performance on Sunday. And again, his stock just went up just a little bit higher than it was before Sunday. Hell of a game from number 33. Hope to see more in the upcoming weeks. The Bears continue to win on the field and off the field with some help from some opponents. So not only did the Bears win big on Sunday, you know, finding at bare minimum their long-term backup quarterback in Tyson Bajan, their running game uh, great again behind Dante Foreman and that defense. But not only did they win the game against the Raiders, but Carolina continues to lose. They're 0-6 on the season. They still hold that number one pick. That belongs to the Bears. And right now the Bears sit at number three, just behind Arizona, who is 1-6 on the season. And even if the Bears continue to scrape out a couple wins these next couple weeks throughout the regular rest of the season, whether Justin Fields comes back and plays well, we continue on this tyson Bajan hype train. Carolina sitting right now at zero wins on their record is huge at this point. And I know we're a long, long ways from April, but if the Bears can somehow still get that number one pick through Carolina or through ourselves somehow, uh, the season still is a, is a long way um, from being over. This team has assets, this team has draft capital, and this team has salary cap to make some moves, to make some splashes 
this next upcoming off season. So let's enjoy these little victories while we can, but also let's still remain looking ahead at next year's draft. And in conclusion, guys, my final thoughts about the Bears' 30-12 victory over the Las Vegas Raiders this past Sunday. Just going back to Tyson Bajan. Uh, again, we don't need this kid to be an all-star. We don't need him to be the second coming of Brock Purdy. The Bears might have found a gem, though, in this kid. I mean, can he be the backup quarterback of the future? We're not quite there at the quarterback controversy yet. That's what I will say. I'm not going to be that Chicago meatball fan that's going to feed you this, this bullshit of he's better than Fields. We got to play him. Uh, he runs the offense better than Justin. We're not there yet. Let's pump the brakes. I want to see Bajant stack back-to-back -back good, solid performances, not turn the ball over, not take stupid sacks, getting the ball out quick, reading through his progressions, reading through his reads. Uh, I, I want to see him build off of this performance, take that in to this upcoming Sunday night in prime time in L.A. at SoFi against the Chargers. And let's see, the Bears opened up again as eight and a half point dogs. The Chargers, in my opinion, although they have a great offense, they have a, a pretty solid roster. For whatever reason, you know, chalk it up to their head coach, Brandon Staley, former linebacker coach here in Chicago under, Nick, uh, under Vic Bangio's uh, regime. They have a hard time putting opponents away. It would not surprise me if the Bears were competitive in this game. And can they support Tyson Bajan? Can they lean on this rushing attack once again? Can they run the ball efficiently? Can they move the ball down the field? Will the defense come out and play and play at a high level once again? This is a big test for the Bears. The Bears don't really know what it's like to win back-to-back -back games. I mean, it, it has been a while that this team has been able to sustain and maintain success in back-to-back -back weeks. So can they do it? That is what I'm looking forward to this upcoming week. So thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. This has been the Bear Necessities Podcast with John Presnowski. Thank you guys so much. Please like, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It really, really helps me out. And I would love to hear your guys' feedbacks, hear your guys' thoughts. Do we roll with Tyson Bajan? Are you guys done with Fields? What's your thoughts on Deontay Foreman? Should he play ahead of Khalil Herbert once he comes back? Should he be, should he be you know, playing ahead of Roshan Johnson? And what to, what to make of Jalen Johnson? I mean, do you want the Bears to re-sign him? Give me your thoughts. Let me know. Be good, be well, and don't forget to bear down.